Hey, how's it going everybody? Thanks for clicking on today's video and tuning in. I'm back out here getting another little hike in uh, afternoons. I've been trying to get out more, do some more hiking and uh, getting outside. The weather's really good. So thought I would share with you something I've gotten questions about in the past. Now, any of us that have a YouTube channel and, and involved in the outdoor community have all done videos on knives before. Uh, we've all done reviews or first impressions or testings or whatever. Um, all of us own knives. And the past videos that I've done, uh, I've gotten a couple of messages and then different comments and stuff about maintaining uh, my tools and what, I, what do I do to maintain my tools. Now I will give a little bit of a disclaimer before, uh, before I start this. Uh, this is just my method of doing it. It doesn't mean this is the only way. It's just the way that works for me. Um, another disclaimer that I'll say is what, what's sharp to me not, may not be sharp to you and what's sharp to you may not be sharp to me. So this is just uh, a way that I maintain my cutting tools uh, for my likeness, for what I need them to do uh, when I'm out in the field. And then uh, the third thing I'll say is all of these, uh, all the tools that I have, have all have all been used. So I may not necessarily be treating my my sharpening process the same way that you would be, uh, in in a sense that I'm not sitting down and stropping my knife seven, eight hundred times and going to a Japanese water stone and all that. Uh, I, I like a working edge on my blades. I like something that, uh, yes, I can shave hair with, but that doesn't go away really quick. So these are just some methods and uh, the different little tools and things that I bring with me uh, when I'm out in the field, uh, whether I'm going on a hike or I'm spending the weekend or whatever, uh, most of it is what I'm carrying on my back. If I have uh, a vehicle or a, a mode of transportation, uh, that's kind of a different story. But I just wanted to throw that out there real quick to help maybe save some questions that I'll get. This is pretty much all I bring with me uh, in the field. Maybe not all of this, but at least uh, some of it. And I feel like it, for me, and the way that I want my tools to be, uh, it covers everything that I would need. Um, the only thing missing from here, and I forgot to throw it in my, uh, my pouch here, is maybe a bottle of olive oil. Um, and that would normally be in my cooking kit pouch. So there's a few other things uh, here left in this pouch. This is uh, the possible pouch that Malcolm makes at the Hidden Woodsman, but it has nothing to do with, uh, with maintaining your tool edge. It's just extra stuff, compass and multi-tool and all that. Um, but that's what I keep all of this stuff in, all these implements in. And like I said, I, I don't always carry uh, all of this that you see, but for the most part, I carry uh, something to this extent. Um, really, the only exception is my leather belt. This is a uh, leather ring belt that Justin Wolf made at Wolf Customs. Uh, I've had this for a very long time now. It was one of the first ones that he made uh, and he's been making them for a while now. And the reason why I say that I don't carry this uh, probably as much as these other tools is because I don't wear this as a primary belt. I've got a belt that's a lot more comfortable for me, but when it does get cooler here and I'm wearing uh, a bigger coat or a, uh, a heavier flannel or something, I will wear this on the outside uh, of, of it just to make it easier for me to get to my knife or get to whatever is on my hip. I'll just wear this on the outside of my clothing just because uh, it, it doesn't function as well as my, my belt that I wear all the time. It's a great belt, but uh, it's just it's a little bit thicker and heavier and, and all that. But um, that's really the only thing out of this that I, that I wouldn't carry with me all the time. Now let's go over, uh, this is just some knives that I'm gonna show you uh, how to how do I go, go about sharpening them, but let's go over what we have here that I would use to sharpen. It's kind of broken up, I guess, into, uh, into categories if we were gonna organize them. Uh, this being like cleaning. So I always carry steel wool with me. Uh, it doesn't weigh anything and there's a lot of benefits to it. We all know that you can use it for fire prep and uh, or nine volt batteries and whatnot. But it's also really good at removing rust and uh, maybe any kind of residue or sap or anything that you have built up uh, on your tools or your blades. So um, I always carry a good wad of this with me and it doesn't take a whole lot. You know, this is all folded up and you can, you can rip off pieces as you go. 
but that's that's cleaning for something that's a little bit more stubborn or stuck on uh, you can either carry one of those really thick uh, scotch pads with you uh, or you could you know carry a piece of sandpaper or, or whatever all this is is just a piece of a uh, of a sanding block it's a real fine grit you can tell that uh, I've been using it to to get stuff off it really helps if you don't like your blades to be uh, that stained with the patina or spots or whatever you can really go to work uh, on your blades with this um, it's just another way to clean and uh, you could also probably use this to scrub out any kind of dishes that, that don't have a non-stick coating on them this would be more or less a cleaning uh, kind of prep that you do before you start uh, your sharpening or honing process and then like I said you've got uh, your leather belt that you can use as a strop uh, I've, I used to have a lot of green uh, stropping compound here on the tail end that hangs down so it wouldn't rub on my clothes or whatever but I could still use it I probably need to put a new coating on there but uh, yeah I don't necessarily I think I th something that a lot of people get confused about is once you once you get a, a new knife um, and you've used it and you've used it and you notice that it's not quite as sharp as what it used to be when you go to work on it you're not sharpening it uh, it's already been sharpened you're you're honing it or you're stropping it you're bringing the edge back so that's why this is a maintenance kit it's not a sharpening kit because i don't ever let my knives get to the point that they need to be resharpened um unless heaven forbid there's a uh, a roll or a or a nick or a chunk taken out uh, a, a break in it in the edge everything is is maintenance to that point this would be used as a strop you can do this multiple ways uh i'll show you a few clips here in a little while of how you could use a belt like this uh, in the woods this these three are my main tools that i use i use this one more so at home um it's kind of a uh i guess a delicacy or whatever so i don't carry it into the field with me that much because i don't want it to break um, but this is definitely something i use whenever i'm on the couch watching tv or uh or in my my room on my desk this what this is is this is an old piece of a uh, ceramic conduit uh, an electrical conduit so I think what, what they used to do was uh, they would run this through a 2 by 4 or a stud in the wall and run the electrical wires through here so that uh, it couldn't conduct any electricity into the wood and cause it to burn and they also uh, it was just a safe way of doing it and that's what this is it's got a little bit of a, of a bend to it uh, I haven't found many of these I was given this by a friend uh, at Wolf Customs Gathering the first year I went uh, thanks a lot Lucas but uh, it's a really fine ceramic and this is probably my favorite thing to use it doesn't necessarily put a stropped uh, polished edge on there but it puts more of a toothy uh, gripping edge and I really enjoy that especially on uh, on knives that aren't uh, like a full flat or a scandy uh, that have a secondary edge on there that that's what this is it's just a, a fine ceramic uh, rod and you can buy the, the the ones off of Amazon or whatever, but this is was just given to me and it ends up working really well. These two things are what I keep in my kit probably 90% of the time in that bag, and it's a it's redundancies. All this is is a uh, Lansky's mini dog bone sharpener. I picked this up at uh, LT's whenever I went to go visit at the shop, and I really like it because it's small enough that it doesn't take up a lot of room in your pack but it, it also gets the job done so especially for your smaller belt knives or you know knives four inches or smaller uh, this works really really well you can hold it this way and just be really careful as you you bring the blade along or you can actually hold this and and go along the blade so like i said i'll show you some clips here in a little bit of how i use this but that's what that is it's just a, a mini dog bone by Langskis. and then this is something that i did a review on a long time ago and it's almost time for me to get a new one, I believe. Uh, but it has just been just an incredible, uh, an incredible tool for me. This is the uh, WorkSharp guided field sharpener, and there's a lot of components on this. Um, I'll put a link in the description below as to my review uh, a while back on doing this. These two are the main things that I normally use. 90% of the time, they work for me. I like them. Uh, when I'm out in the field, I don't necessarily sit down and strop my knives because it's normally you know either a weekend trip or if it is a week-long trip i'll take the time and strop them but for the most part the ceramic stones or this will do the job for me and then i'll use this to clean them and uh and keep the rust and all that off my knives one way that you might see people use daddy's leather belt 
for sharpening is uh, putting it around a tree. So you can throw, uh, throw this through the loop, bring it up to the height that you want it at, and strop like this, you know? That way you're putting tension on it and you're keeping the belt somewhat tight. The only thing that, that I don't like about this is that there's still slack in this belt. So depending on what kind of uh, edge geometry you prefer on your knife, this can either help you or it can hurt you. Um, if you like using a Scandi like I do, uh, this will put more of a, a, con, a convex grind on that secondary edge if it has one or if it's to zero it won't be a true Scandi V grind. It will uh, give it some cheeks because it gives, it flexes. So as you push down, it's going to, I mean, very minutely, but it will do that. Um, instead of opposed to laying it flat on a flat surface and keeping your angle, um, it, it, won't, it won't round it that way. But you can do that with a, with a leather belt, maybe something with an, like an ax, uh, if you're really careful and choked up on it. At, most axes have a, a, a convex egg, edge on them or if your knife does. Or, like I'd said, uh, I put some stropping compound uh, on the tail end, so whenever I would throw this around me on the outside of my clothes, you know, it's not gonna be getting on my clothes because this hangs down. But the reason I did that is I could uh, fold this under something like a, like a piece of bark or a, or a log or even drape it over the top of a log and step on it and, uh, and get my flat surface that way, a flattened area and then I could have a flat strop. Um, but for the most part, like I said, I don't really use that this, that this that much anymore. So if you notice, the reason why I brought this rig out here is uh, this has three different grinds all in one rig. So I figured it'd be a, a really good example of showing you uh, how, what I brought with me, um, how it works for me and how I use those uh, maintenance tools to keep uh, different grinds sharp. So we've got a, a, a Scandi, a full flat, and a uh, convex edge so I'm gonna bring you down to this piece of bark and show you uh, and show you how I use these tools all right so I've got a piece of bark here uh, first I'm going to show you the Scandi grind now the way LT does their Scandi there is a slight uh, secondary bevel on it it's just from their hard buffing wheel but here's the ceramic conduit and just gonna lay it down on a flat surface like this uh, piece of bark and you just pull it back to you real slow you find the bevel Make sure that you're not uh, pulling up or pushing down as you get towards the tip of the blade, and that'll keep your uh, your Scandi as close to a V grind as possible. And you just repeat this process back and forth, um, making sure, like I said, to push forward and to pull back nice and slow, and uh, and keep your your blade straight as you're holding that that angle to get the edge. So that's the Scandi. Um, you just kind of can look at the sunlight there and see where the, the little nicks or maybe uh, spots are that need to get touched up. Next is the full flat. This is a full flat with a secondary. The same thing, except you want to rock it a little bit higher because the secondary is a little bit steeper than the one on the Scandi. And you just pull it back real, real uh, slow to you, keeping it nice and controlled. You don't want it to slip off and uh, cut your hand or anything. That's what helps with having a flat surface like this uh, piece of bark or a, a stump or something. You can really keep it controlled. Uh, this next one is the, the big blade and it's convex. I'm going to show you a little bit different way of doing this. Um, because it's so big, it's kind of unwieldy uh, to, to use on a stump like this or a piece of bark. Here we have the WorkSharp guided field sharpener. Now this is one of my favorite uh, sharpening tools to use because of all the versatility that you can do with it. The ceramic rod being able to sharpen fish hooks and have a coarse and a fine. Same process here. It's just a little bit smaller and you've got the, the guards in a way, but as long as you're real slow and controlled, you won't have a problem using a ceramic rod on either, either types of these grinds, whether it's the Scandi or the full flat. If your blade's in a little bit rougher shape, you might want to twist it and, and use the coarse side uh, just to clean it up a little bit quicker. But majority of the time, I just use the, uh, the smooth ceramic. You can flip it over and use this strop on the back. It's opposite. You want to push it away from you. Otherwise, it's going to cut into the leather. Um, I like to start with the tip of the blade as I'm pushing it away. Uh, it kind of helps get that, uh, that sweep of the blade a little bit easier uh, as far as stropping it and keeping it nice and uh, honed up. Same thing, like I said, with the flat grind. You just want to make sure that you're holding your edge straight. I don't really use the, the guides on this because I've, I've figured out the angles of my bevels. 
but uh, you can use those depending on what kind of grind you have in your knife and whether they match up. Same thing with the stropping. You just want to make sure that you uh, keep it slow and controlled. And other than that, this is a great little tool to add to your kit. So the reason why I didn't uh, show you how to sharpen the bigger knife using those tools is because since it is bigger, it's a little bit more unwieldy uh, to try to manage like, either on the ground or on a stump being flat. And because this is more of a... Uh, of a big chopping tool or you know a uh, something to baton with or cut roots and uh, and clear camp and stuff with and process wood uh, this isn't necessarily something that I'm need as sharp as like that smaller like skinning type knife so with this one I do tend to use uh, a longer ceramic stone and I do I do tend to hold it and find the angle and and sharpen it that way um, and whenever I'm sharpening it towards myself, I'm just very careful and I go really slow. There's no need to be in a hurry. Um, even if you need to sharpen this in sections, so maybe just sharpen it from here to here and then stop, reset, hold the blade up closer, and then you can sharpen it, uh, towards the tip that way. Um, if I had a, a big stump or a, uh, a flattened area, a bigger area, like a fallen tree or something, uh, I could do it a lot easier on that but i haven't been able to find one out here i've been walking around looking for one so that's how uh you can use uh, a ceramic stone like this to sharpen a bigger knife and that's how i generally do it and then if i don't have this with me i can do the same thing if i'm very careful with the uh, dog bone sharpener right, so here we have the Lansky dog bone sharpener this is the mini one they make a bigger one that i've been meaning to get but i just i keep forgetting uh same thing if you just if you're just real careful and you take this in sections you can sharpen it to you, you hit the rubber bumper right there and then flip it over and do the same thing on that side until you hit it. And then you can just choke up on the blade and, and sharpen it the rest of the way like so. Uh, another option that you can do is you can also hold the, hold the ceramic itself and hold your edge here and go down the edge this way. Uh, you, can, you can sharpen, move the stone instead of moving the knife. So just to give you a, a little bit closer up of an angle, here's the, uh, the dog bone sharpener. And what you wanna do is just find your edge. And like I said, this takes practice, but you see that shadow right underneath the edge of the blade? If you watch that shadow till it disappears, you can feel when that metal's cutting on there. Um, you can, it takes practice, like I said, but if it's a Scandi, for the most part, you can just, uh, Get that to focus. For the most part, you can just rock it up on that bevel because it's only got one bevel and pull it towards you. If it's got a little bit of a secondary edge like this one does, it's got like a hard buffing edge that they finish at LTs, all you have to do is just rock it up just a little bit. So you'll rock it up onto that first edge like so and then just roll it a little bit more and you can hear it. You hear that? You can feel and hear when it's biting into that metal. And it's no different with the, with the full flat one. So here's the Canadian fur trapper kind of knife, belt knife, and this is a full flat, and it's the same thing. This one does have a second, uh, it goes full flat from the spine, and then it's got that secondary edge on the bottom. So the same thing, barely tilted up, and you can feel it cut into it. And then just make sure that when you're coming off the knife that you're not rolling the knife down or flicking it up that you're just coming straight off that way you're not you're not putting a hard buff on the edge or, or rolling the edge any when you go to sharpen it so that's what i use to maintain the uh the cutting tools that i carry with me in the woods uh like i said it'll differ between different cutting tools if you're bringing a machete or you're bringing an axe or a hatchet uh, or a tomahawk or, or whatever but uh, for the most part I feel like those three grinds are pretty common in what most people use and those are the, the the sharpening tools and the implements that work well for me so I hope this helps any like I said I, I use my tools so they don't look the best and I'm not looking at getting this perfect mirror polished uh, polished edge I just want something that'll either cut meat or cut wood or cordage whenever I need it to so that's what I do and that's how I, I maintain my tools so I'll put links uh, in the description box to where you can find all this stuff except for that conduit I, I don't know maybe check your flea stores 
But other than that, I mean, I'll, I'll put links in where you can get the, the dog bone sharpener and the, uh, the, the guided field sharpener. I um, also wanted to throw out there too, if you are on Instagram, uh, please go and like my page and, and follow me on Instagram. I'll follow you back. Uh, this is where you can find it. And, and I really try to do a, a lot of different stuff on there. I love Instagram. I do the, uh, the stories every day. Uh, I post little small videos on there. Like the other day, I did a few little fire videos that I don't necessarily put up on my YouTube channel. So it's just another way for us to interact and for me to see what you're doing out in the woods and you can see what I'm doing out in the woods. So thanks everybody for watching. Remember, get outside and enjoy the woods.